I don't care if you're not a racing fan. Even now, I defy you to watch last year's Melbourne Cup and not be moved. Not be on the edge of your seat as Maccabi Diva heads for home. The crowd roaring, jockey Glenn Boss down low in the saddle, the finish line in sight. The champion's third Melbourne Cup in a row. It was a truly unique achievement for both horse and rider. Maccabi Diva's retired now, but Glenn Boss is still going strong, still hungry for more Melbourne Cups. Four would be nice, five even better. After that, who knows? And with the big race just two days away, what more can I say? At Coolmore Stud in the New South Wales Hunter Valley, Glenn Boss lays eyes on the retired champion, Maccabi Diva. Gee, she looks good. It's the first time he's seen her since they created history. She's still pretty sexy there. Get out. Oh, she is sexy. Look a at sexy that. I mean, horse. Uh, if, if you're a horse person, you look at that and go, uh, she's a great looking mare. Let she's, me have another look at her. Yeah, have a look. She got all the right bumps in all the right places. It's great. She has. That's a nice looking um <coughs> behind. She's got. Yeah. <laughs> she's got a good eye. She's kind and she's you know, when you see her like through here, she's She's powerful. She's being a good girl to me. The best. Thanks, Back behind them, here's Maccabi Diva. A nation roars for a hero. She's starting to wind up. Together, Boss and Maccabi Diva won three Melbourne Cups in a row. A feat never achieved before, and one few thought was ever possible. But a champion becomes a legend. I've watched that tape over and over again. I still cry when I watch it and I still get the goosebumps. And I'm sure that I'll be still getting those goosebumps when I'm an old man. That's simply what this race does to you. No other race does. That. What's the most important in this team? The horse or the jockey? Oh, the horse. Really? For sure. Oh, for sure. Yes, yes, of course it is. Glenn Boss couldn't pick a, a dromedary up and make it win three Melbourne Cups. But there again, there have been great horses that have been let down by their jockeys. Glenn Boss never let Maccabi Diva down. She's Archie, tries hard, but Maccabi Diva wins the cup. She's Archie, And that, according to veteran racing journalist Max Presnell, is what makes Glenn Boss a champion. Maccabi Diva, she's got right up on the... His three Melbourne Cup winning rides are among the best ever. Vintage class. Whereas he could have ridden cautious, he rode great. For that performance, I give him my Balls of Steel award. Balls of Steel. Mm. That's they what... don't melt. <laughs> Defying the odds with nerve and skill have become the hallmarks of Glenn Boss's career. Week in, week out, other jockeys are more consistent, but come cup time, none have been able to match strides with the boss. And never has the Australian track had a jockey celebrate their success quite like this. I just really enjoy the crowd, and I really enjoy the moment, you know. When I read about you, I read about, oh, these are the words that are mentioned cocky, confident, flamboyant, brash, emotional. Hmm. Are you all of that? It's not a good word to describe me cocky, but I'm all the others, you know, I can be all the above. Are you a confidence rider? Very confident, yeah. When I'm confident on race day, I actually feel like I can do um, the unthinkable on horses. I can get myself that psyched up that I can literally go out there and do any on a horse. Um, and you could dance on a horse and it's still oh, weird. Oh, you know, I, I sometimes think that there's probably no one else that can do what I do sometimes when I'm that confident. There, there are. I'm not saying that there are. No, there no, are, but that's how you're feeling. I get, that, I get that feeling that I am just the best. When you stand here, knowing that you've come past here first yeah. three times, is that a dream come true for the kid from Gympie? Oh, it's a dream for any kid, you know. You know, like when I went past the winning post here, I remember putting my hand over my face, like I just couldn't believe it. I thought, you know, 
it just shouldn't happen, you know, but here I am, it's, and it's, it's reality, it's real, it's history. Ever since he was a kid growing up on a Queensland farm, life in the saddle has made sense for Glenn Boss. But a career as a jockey was never on the radar, until one day when he was 15, his grandparents took him to the Gympie races. We pulled up at, at Gympie Racecourse, it was about 200 metres from the finishing line. And <laughs> there was a race being run at the time and so I run across to the fence, you know, and, and I can just remember like it was yesterday, the horses come around the bend and, and just the speed and, and the noise and the jockeys were, you know, obviously feeling for their whips and starting to put pressure on their horses and they thundered past and I just went, oh my God. I went home and quit school that week and started my, and straight back up the Gympie the week later to get introduced to a trainer to start my apprenticeship. And it was about the speed? Yeah, it was just the adrenaline rush, you know, because I've always been a bit of an adrenaline junkie. Like, even a kid, I rode motorbikes fast. Everything was... I, fast. I only had, I had two <laughs> speeds, stopped and flat out. Boss was a young man in a hurry. He was soon being legged aboard those bush horses in Gympie, and his sheer aggression and determination caught the eye of the racing stewards like Ray Murrahy. It certainly came to our attention almost immediately. He was a kid that could ride. But he was an aggressive rider, was he? Right from the get-go. Yeah. yeah, he's an aggressive rider and he's a winning rider. Boss's winning ways also caught the eye of a pretty 16-year-old girl called Sloan. What was your first impression of Glenn? Um, I don't know, probably the, <laughs> probably the normal, like, 16-year-old thoughts. I just thought he was cute and... She just wanted me for my body. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would have been obvious. Obvious, no. <laughs> <laughs> Way back then, though, you saw that desire to be really good at what he did. Absolutely, yep. He has not changed one bit. To say life is good for Glenn and Sloan would be an understatement. They live in designer luxury on five acres at Sydney's Fringe. They have two children, 11-year-old Tate, whose forehand is already too good for his dad, and six-year-old Carter. Oh, Jesus. But being boss of the turf is not enough for Glenn. He is now out to conquer the scum. At 37, Glenn Boss is master of his own universe. A helicopter pilot's license is only a matter of course for someone so driven. But what's truly remarkable is how an experience that brought him crashing back to earth changed him forever. G-Boss before the fall was very driven, um, very motivated, very narrow, like a tunnel vision person, you know. My family wasn't falling behind, but it was all about me, 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 my job. On a rainy night in the gambling mecca of Macau four years ago, Boss slipped and fell. It looked harmless enough, but he broke his neck in two places. I knew I broke it straight away. I heard the crack. It wasn't until um, I went to Hong Kong and I was told how close I'd come and what the outcome could have been. And the outcome could have been death or a wheelchair. Yeah. Okay, so when you were told that, did that make change everything? It really hit home. It really hit home. And I can remember it like it was yesterday. Um, uh, Dr. Chang, and he told me what, what it was, and, and, and then my family come in, and it's like, oh my God. Bad, huh? Because mm. you, could, you could have thought, well, you know, here I am, wondering about, you know, horses and stuff. Yeah. It, it, it clearly strikes at your very soul that 
life-changing moment. Yeah, I mean, um, there was a point there where I could not have seen him again. Did you make a decision there and then to change things? Yeah, um, immediately. I thought I'd been doing things um, the wrong way. I'm getting sorry, a bit of my... That's all right, that's all right. Did you see the change in Glenn that Glenn speaks about? Uh, almost immediately. I think he must have just realised, well, I just can't take things for granted. He's a lot calmer. And that's a stark contrast to how he used to be? Yeah, definitely. That's the point of it. You feel that's, uh, when that goes into your skull, it's a bit of how you're going there, I tell you. <laughs> to mend Glenn's neck, steel screws were drilled into his skull and a body brace was fitted for four months. Can I have a look? Yeah, you want, yeah, you want to see it on. It's, uh, <laughs> Is that all right? Yeah, it's quite bizarre, but anyway, we'll, we'll put it on for you. But, um, oh, this is how it, um, okay. that's how it fitted on and the, and the screws obviously went through to your, into your skull, about a centimetre or so, and, and basically that's it. You cannot, you know, you can't move one millimetre. Your neck will not move. So that's what it's all about. You, you couldn't lie down. This is how I slept. I, I actually slept with um, like pillows all around me and, and, and feet up and that's how I slept. You know, um, there was no other way to sleep. At first, doctors thought Boss would be lucky to make it back at all. But he was riding inside five months. The medicos may have been amazed, but not those who knew him best, like Maccabi Diva's trainer, Lee Friedman. He's told me how he used to have to sleep sitting up with those things in his head. I, I just can't imagine that. But I guess that's the measure of of a man who's determined, I guess, at yeah. the very least. and a bit crazy, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> he admits to being a bit crazy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you've got to be to do it. And there's no doubting that. Just look what happened to Glenn on Melbourne Cup Day 2002, just five months after he broke his neck. Glenn Boss calls it the accident he had to have. People ask me, what's it like? I say, well, stand on the roof of your car in a football field, get up to about 70 kilometres now and just throw yourself off, and then get one of the football teams to come along and run all over the top of you, you know. Does it make you stop? Does it make you want to rethink it? Oh, no way. No, not even for a millisecond. Look at the highs you get out of the sport. I've always That's... wanted to hold a Melbourne Cup. Yeah, it's not many <laughs> people actually get to hold it, you know. No. The Holy Grail. Of it racing. is, isn't it? Yeah. It's quite substantial. Glenn Boss already holds a unique place in Australian sporting history. For the past three years, he has become synonymous with the race that stops the nation. But Glenn Boss is never one to sit still. The kid from Gympie is out to rewrite the history books yet again. I'm going to put every bit of energy I've got into focusing on hopefully getting a fourth. Because people say, what, what are you going to do now? Straight away, I want to win a fourth Melbourne Cup. I want to join the greats. It'd be pretty, good. <laughs> It'd be pretty special, wouldn't it? I'm going to do everything in my powers to get there. Don't worry about that. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the Nine Now app.